ado, we will jump straight in. And um, yeah, thanks for the introduction, Dagmar. So it'd be nice to kick off. So I will share my screen as we said. And um, let's give one second. Let's see how that looks. That should be showing. Are you seeing a slide? Yep, thumbs up. So we're good to go. And um, I've just had a notification that we might be getting load shedding at um, in 20 minutes in case in which case I will in 10 minutes I'll just move across my range extender doesn't reach all the way so I'll just shift into the other side where the wi-fi will be uninterrupted so if you see me walking I'll just blur my background while I walk into the other room or the other office where we do have um, full, uh, full extension there but yes so good so especially thank you Dagmar and Funding Connection thanks for setting this up and delighted to work with your clients as Dagmar mentioned, uh, we've been working together for many years. I've helped uh, coach her, mentor, and grow, help grow her business over the years. And Dagmar has been instrumental in helping many people, many of our clients in our database, um, do that really important thing, in, which is all about raising capital. Because you know, any business without uh, without money and without capital, we are dead in the water. So uh, I refer people onto Dagmar regularly who are needing access to different forms of funding capital. And she really is the guru in that space. So thank you, Dagmar, and well done for what you've done there. You've helped so many people. So what I was gonna share and what, what, what Dagmar and I were chatting the other day to say, well, let's do, what's what's an insight that would help um, business owners out there? Cause I know a lot of you are on the call, you know, some of you are brand new in business and getting funding for the first time and getting to grow the business. Others are established business owners. And you're looking at growing the business you're looking at getting into new markets you some of you are even setting up totally new businesses or new ventures in addition to your existing operation so a lovely opportunity for everybody to connect so when we do a session like this please do get into the chat and share your details what it is that you're up to if you have a linkedin profile or a website or anything we should be looking at use that as an opportunity to connect with one another i'm going to be sharing with you a roadmap on how to build the business and how to get a business, as you see here on the title slide, not just a better business, but a highly profitable business, a business that becomes an asset you can sell one day, and we're going to have some fun doing it. So for those of you I haven't met, uh, my name is Trevor Clark. Our company is called Action Coach Business Coaching, a business I've been very proud to be a part of for going on 14 years. At the end of this year, it'll be 14 years. We're a company where that is 30 years old. The, the company was founded over 30 years in Australia. We still privately owned a guy called Brad Sugars who set up the business and um, has really built something quite incredible. We've got a, a company that's now in over 80 countries around the world, close to a thousand offices. And we are regularly in the top 50 franchises in the world. So we, we actually compete against companies like Burger King, which is pretty unusual for a business to business franchise. But what we do is we, are, we help businesses grow. And you'll see there our global vision, world abundance through business re-education. That's something we live and breathe. We believe in abundance. We believe there's enough money out there for everybody to grow a successful business. How do we help people achieve abundance is business education, or I should say business re-education. So we don't send people back to school. What we say is we got a business while you're running a business, we need to be learning, learning new business skills, learning better ways of doing things, not just learning new ways of doing things, but also better ways of doing things. So sometimes even people know what to do, but aren't doing it. So that's where a lot of our um, work is, is around helping people do what they know they should be doing anyway. We bring in that accountability loop as coaches. Uh, so that's a bit about me. As I mentioned, I've been in this business for 2000, since 2009. I'm what they call a, a senior franchise partner. I don't just do business coaching. I also do executive coaching. For those of you that aren't sure of the distinction, is uh, business coaching is where we work with business owners, owner, run, owner, managed businesses. So anything from small to medium to even some large businesses where they're still owner managed. So we typically work with the owners, the directors of the business, and then over time, we start coaching the team. Um, on the executive coaching side, that's obviously in the corporate space where we're working with branch managers, regional managers, doing things like leadership training. Uh, we run programs like finance for non-financial managers and help with financial education, leadership skills, things like that. But uh, yeah, I've been in this business a while. 
and I do what I love. I, I always joke that I've got the best job in the world. I help business owners make money and we have a lot of fun doing it in the process. And what I'd like to be sharing with you today is a bit of a roadmap on how we do that. You know, it's, um, it's not a quick process building a business. It takes some time. So with your permission, let's treat, let's treat this workshop as a coaching session. Um, take away all your distractions, turn off your phones, turn off Facebook, turn off, well, unless you're listening in on Facebook, of course, but um, get rid of all the other distractions and let's spend an hour or so just really getting your head around the business. And I'm going to take you through some, a framework that's going to help you assess your own business, help you see what's working, what's not working, what are the areas that need attention. And obviously the reason I ask your permission to be coached is as uh, much as I believe every business should have a coach. I have learned over the years that not everybody is coachable. Not everybody is willing to be challenged. Not everybody is willing to be held accountable to their goals. Not everybody is willing to be challenged and willing to do the work that it takes to build a successful business. So we obviously only work with people that are driven and that really want to, they don't just talk about achieving stuff that they're willing to do the work. But a part of coaching as well is that we're often having some uncomfortable discussion. I've got to ask some awkward questions of people. And um, those of you, anybody that's worked with a, a personal coach, a fitness coach, a sports coach, you know, the coach, you, you can picture a sports coach. If you wake up one day and it's raining and you, you want to lie in bed, you, you message the coach and say, coach, I'm, I'm going to watch Netflix today. Is he going to be uh, Oh, no problem. Let me send you a cup of tea and tuck you in. Yeah, quite the contrary. So for a coach to help you become successful, he has to say, a bad idea. You get a, put your running shoes on and even though it's raining, you meet me at the track now. And in fact, you're going to do a couple of extra push-ups because you wanted to uh, line. And obviously, I'm, I'm being a bit facetious there. We have a lot of fun with our clients. But essentially, it is about being that accountability partner. We're often helping, making people or get, getting people to look at parts of the business that sometimes they don't want to look at. And obviously in business, there's things we enjoy doing, there's things we don't want to do. And sometimes we help people address the areas of the business that they don't enjoy. And we help you either make those areas enjoyable or help you find people that can actually take care of those areas for you. Because bear that in mind in business is nobody is good at everything. You know, when you grow, build a business, you can assemble a team of people that are going to help you achieve your goals. So as we said, let's use the chat. Um, Dagmar has introduced herself. I've introduced myself. We're keeping this uh, session to roughly an hour. So um, we'll keep the discussions in the chat boxes. But it'd be great. Put your details inside there. Uh, I'll be following it here, um, the chat as we go as well. And it'll be nice to know just how long have you been in business? What is your company name? Put your, put your website there. Put your LinkedIn details. What I'm also interested in knowing is do you have an exit plan? Because too often we find big people get into business and think, well, I'll do this for a few years and then retire. I'll do this for a few years and then sell. And then 10, 20 years later, people are still prisoners inside that same business. So is there an exit plan? And what is your exit plan? Are you wanting to sell the business, hand it over? Are you looking to list your business on the stock exchange? Do you want to give the business to your children? Do you want the staff to buy it from you? Do you want to open multiple branches across the country or do you want to open branches globally just let's have a handle on where you are taking this business and put that in the chat box if you were if you would so essentially there's three areas that i want to focus on with you this morning sales and profits first rule of every business we have to make money and those of you that have been working with dagmar she'll be helping you build your business plan and obviously anybody that's looking at lending money to a business, the first thing any lender is going to say is, are we going to get our money back? How long will it take? What is your profitability model? What is your marketing plan? What, what is the financial model? Because if we can't prove on paper that there that this business is going to be profitable, how on earth are we going to do it in the real world? So the plan has got to be working in that space. So we're going to help you uh, with some ideas to get your business a lot more profitable if you are stuck in that space. If your profits are okay, but you're working too hard. I'm going to take you through some ideas on how you can free up a little bit more time. And if profits are okay, your work-life balance is okay, but you have some issues with your team at each other's throat, we're going to quickly touch on some ideas to help get the team 
working a lot better and recruitment in that space. And if you are battling in all three of those areas, then please do reach out and uh, maybe we should sit down together and uh, have a chat because uh, business doesn't have to be as hard as it sometimes get to be. We're going to help you improve those three areas. So let's just talk about your business for a second. You know, we, if you look at the bottom right, that picture there, I think epitomizes the vision that a lot of people have when they start a business. A lot of us set up a business, we, we buy an existing business, we launch a business from scratch, whatever, we buy a franchise, whatever it might be. And people have this lifestyle vision that if it's my own business, I'll be making a lot of money, I'll have a lot more free time to have hobbies and spend time with a family and for amazing holidays. And there's this beautiful vision of what the entrepreneurial lifestyle looks like. But we find in reality is one, two, three, five, ten years into business, we find the reality is a lot of business owners look more like that gent on the top left, sort of working crazy long hours, not paying themselves enough money, never getting to have holidays and just stressed, stressed, stressed. So a lot of what we get up to as business coaches is helping people fall back in love with their business, helping get profits up and start to get the lifestyle again and getting the benefit of running a business. So uh, we want to get to the point that you're in charge of your business again, that you're driving the business and the business is becoming something that you're really proud of, that the business starts to look like it did in your head when you first had the vision of what this business was going to be over time. Because the, the, the reverse of that, if we don't get the business that we envision, we, we often find that people don't own a business, people own a job. You probably have come across this acronym a little bit, you know, because we, we, most people start working for a, as a job, right? We work as an employee working for somebody else. People leave, start their own business, and two, three years down the road, find they have a job again. And a job, if you haven't seen this acronym, it stands for just over broke. And now uh, you don't have to put it in the chat box, but if I asked you right now, those of you that are in business, write down the number right now. If you weren't in business, if you were back in the market and you got a job working for a company and you were getting paid your market-related salary, write down the number. What is your market-related salary? If you had a good job with a good company and you were being paid what you are worth, write down that number. And if you now want you to write down what you're paying yourself right now out of your business you don't have to share the chat box you're welcome to if you would like but i will guarantee that it's only a few of you that are paying yourself more out of your own business than you could be getting inside the market if you had a job so why do people get into business if this is the case because often we find business owners are paying themselves last the business isn't profitable to be paying enough money. Sometimes the profits are there, but the cash flow is not good enough and the owner is not taking enough money out in terms of cash. And that's where we find we now have a job again. Even though you're the owner of the business, are you actually paying yourself what you deserve? So you want to change that cycle because a job also means that if you don't go to work, you don't get paid. If you take a holiday, you don't get paid. You want to get to that point that the business can work without you. So this is what we use as a definition of a successful business. And this is what you've got to think in your mind to say, do I own a job or do I own a successful business? This definition, a commercial, profitable, it's an enterprise that works and it works without you. So in other words, commercial business is it ticks all the boxes, the foundations are in place. The basics are there. Profitable, yes, we know what profits are consistently profitable, not profitable one month and in a lost position the next month, consistently profitable. A business that works is systematized, there's job descriptions, how to manuals, organization charts, all that kind of stuff is documented and in place. And a business working without you means that there are, you've hired a team that's going to be running the business for you. If you guys don't mind unmuting your, or just muting yourself, if there, there's a okay. bit of background noise there. Uh, obviously, if you do want to add in anything and comment, then do uh, do unmute yourself and chat at any point. We would love the discussion. But if you don't mind, keep yourself muted when you're not talking. So hmm. maybe Doug, you could just unmute. Yes, I'm just having a look here and see what I can do. Give me. Oh, good. It won't let me unmute. I don't even someone. see who is talking. I see it's Alfred. Ah. Alfred, yeah, Alfred, stop talking. Uh, mute yourself. 
<laughs> okay, there we go. Start right, it. So <laughs> this is what we want to get to, right? We want to have a business that's profitable and working without us. Easier said than done, right? Because a profitable business that works without you is a business you can sell. A profitable business that's working without you is a business you can take a holiday from. It's a business, if you've got a recipe that works, it's a business you can start opening multiple locations in different territories. So I think this is a, an important end goal to get this up on the wall and say, that's my driving vision for this business. Because if those things aren't happen, nobody's going to want to buy this business from you. And it's a tragedy. We find it so often. I have We, we get involved a lot in buying and selling businesses as well. We've often had it when people have come to us and said, I want to sell the business. And no, nope, can you help me sell it? No problem. What is your uh, asking price of the business? And there's a value there. And we do a valuation on the business. And either the value is only a tiny fraction of what the owner believes he should be selling the business for, or it's not even sellable to the point that it's not that nobody even wants it, regardless of the value. And then we find the owner of a business retires. And the business shuts down or the owner of the business uh, immigrates, gets a job and there's no buyer for that business. The business gets shut down. And that to me is heartbreaking because now you've got your staff that literally get retrenched overnight. People that had a job and you have 550, 500 um, breadwinners that no longer have a job because the owner of the business did not build it to such a point that it is sellable. So that's what we want to do now is take you through the recipe or a roadmap to see how you can get that business profitable and working without you. So this is the framework that we use in Action Coach. We coach our clients in a business pro coaching program through this process. We call it a six-step framework. And as you'll see, I'll talk you through each of these steps. You'll see it's actually the, it's, it's the, 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 the way a business evolves anyway over time. It's the natural evolution of a business or growth of a business. And what we do in a business coaching program is we help you speed up the process. We help you identify where your business is. We'll help you identify strategies that will improve each of these areas. What are the cracks? And then we'll help you fill the cracks. So that's also why we most of our clients that we coach are on longer term retainers with us. A business coaching program is just like a fitness program. You don't go to the gym and do one session with a fitness coach. And then you've got lots of muscles and a flat stomach. It's by going regularly, repeatedly over time and getting the habits in place. That's where the results come. So what I'll do here is I'll be showing you the process I'll take you through in the next hour is basically a three-year coaching program, but um, I'll speed you up through it because obviously behind each of these levels, I'll talk you through there's lots of work to be done. So we have people that whiz through this process in the space of a year and other people four, five, six years to get through the process. But what I'm going to do now is hopefully give you an idea of where you at and some of the, the things that you can work on. So the first step, we use the word mastery. The first few months of coaching and regardless of where you're at at the business, I recommend that this is an area that you should take a look at and just make sure the foundations are in place. Because like when you build a house, you know, you don't start putting the windows in and the roof and the roof tiles and you don't start painting the walls until you make sure you've got the foundations in place. You're not going to, if you have a house, you're not going to put a second story addition above that house without double checking the foundations first to make sure those foundations are strong enough to carry additional levels on top of the house. And that's exactly what we do in mastery to make sure you're building on a stable base. So let's drill down on that. Oh, sorry, uh, I'll just take you through all the levels and then I'll drill, drill down on each one. So the mastery is getting the foundations in place. Then we look at niche, which is all about making sure we've got um, a marketing plan in place, make sure we have marketing strategies in place to build profitability. So that's all about getting consistent cash through the business. Once we are stable, once we have cash flowing through the business, <clears throat> we want to then start working on our systems. We use the word leverage. We want to make sure the business is highly systematized because that'll start freeing up time. When we have systems in place, now we can look at are they getting more out of our existing team because now they can, they can manage themselves a lot better because the systems are in place or we can look at growing additional team members, hiring more people and growing that team. So we also do a lot in the recruitment space. And what a lot of people want to do is get to this point that we call synergy. And synergy is basically the point we have a business that's working without you to a degree, that's profitable, 
And that's usually where you would look at putting a general manager in place to run the business for you, to free you up to do other things. And a results level, that's the kind of, um, the, the peak of all of this is a results level business, is a business that's totally working without you. At Synergy, you maybe you're working three days a week or mornings only. A business at the results level is a business that doesn't need you at all. You could disappear for three months and nobody would even notice. And that's a business that is now, if you, if you get a business to that point, that's a business we should be franchising. We should be bottling the secret sauce and make sure that we roll it out in multiple locations because we're getting it right. So that's the roadmap. As you can see, a lot of work to be done behind each of those areas or each of those levels. So what I'm going to do now is drill down on each of them. So this is an important place to start at Mastery. Do we have the foundations in place? A lot of businesses don't even look at this when they launch. We go to go to SIPC, we register a company, get a PDY Limited, launch a business, start hiring people, start finding customers, and nobody's ever taken the time to say, right, do we actually have the foundations in place? Are we building on solid ground? So four areas that you want to look at to make sure the foundation, the destination mastery. Have you got clear goals in place, both personal goals as well as business goals? And um, do we have a plan on how to get there? So some of you will be doing some very detailed strategic plans and Dagmar is just the person to help you with that, you know, for funding or what have you. Other people, the plan might be a simple one-page quarterly plan. You know, what are the, the simple strategies we're gonna put in place this month for, for cash flow improvement? So, but there's gotta be clear goals They've got to be clear plans in place. Money mastery. Are we using proper bookkeeping software? Have we hired a professional bookkeeping and accounting and tax advisory business? Do we have financial forecasting in place? Are we budgeting? Do we have a cash flow accounts receivable system in place? We, is our pricing correct? We want to drill down on the money. We want to work on time management. Are we managing our time properly? Are we delegating well? Are our team highly structured? This is the things that we want to look at on the time area. And then obviously delivery mastery, we want to be sure that we are giving a consistent service to the market. So four areas that you need to tick off to be able to know that you actually have a solid foundation in place. So I'm going to drill down even further on each of those, right? So destination mastery. This is the very first thing that we need to look at. Do you have your personal goals in place? At, at a simple level, have each of you done a vision board uh, uh, at your personal level? Do you have a bucket list of the things that you want to tick off in life? Do you have a life plan? Do you have a retirement plan in place? Have you decided what age you want to retire and what your retirement goals are? You know, if you need help in that space, we'll help you with it. One of the first things we do is we do an alignment process with all of our clients, getting, getting clarity on your personal goals as well as then the business goals and help with the business plan and areas like that. So we've got to be clear on where you're going. Um, actually, for anybody's interest, we actually have a planning event coming up next week, Wednesday. We do have a couple of seats available. We do a full day um, goal setting session, goal setting, networking, some great guest speakers and a networking session called Growth Club that's coming up next Wednesday. Uh, Slendila, if you don't mind, just put uh, put some information on that in the chat. And um, if anybody's interested in knowing a bit more about that, um, there's a system in place. But another key area of, of destination mastery is your vision. Have you got a company, or maybe a personal vision, but have you also got a company vision statement? Not just the brass plaque that's on the wall or the, the page on the website that the web designer wrote. Have you taken the time to clearly define what is that, that impact that your company is making? Um, what is the, the the purpose, the vision, the legacy of this business? And have you documented? I've used the example here of Elon Musk. You know, most people, some people know him well, some not well, but his personal vision is to preserve the future of our species, of human beings. He believes that we'll face an extinction event at some point, and he's going out of his way to make sure that, A, with renewable energy, we are um, uh, avoiding... The, the, um, the, the, that we can preserve the planet and on top of that populating Mars and SpaceX and getting into um, uh, populating the species on another planet. I mean, that's a pretty big vision, 
to make sure that human beings are going to stay around a lot longer despite what happens in the planet so quite a big vision it's important to document that in your own business so you sorry i'm just going back to that so have you documented that what is the steve jobs used to call it the dent you want to make on the universe or in the universe we need to document this stuff and we need to talk about it regularly because with a clear vision you're going to attract team members that resonate with that vision with a clear vision you're going to attract customers that resonate with that vision so that's the key thing we want to get documented get it up on the walls get it on the website make sure it's a meaningful vision that uh, enrolls and inspires and then your job as the leader of the organization is to shout about it regularly and uh, ah, i see some comments here yes some of you are saying you've got uh, vision boards is a great one as well so it's your personal vision as well as your company vision so not just the vision not just the goals have you got a plan in place a detailed sort of 20 page 30 page strategic business plan for those that need it in that space or sometimes the plan is just a one page plan but um, without the plan we are dead in the water we need to be very clear on where we are going and uh, those of you that have done scuba diving you'll know these words right dive the plan plan the dive if we don't do that people can get hurt people can get lost people can die and the tragic thing that we see a lot in business is a lot of people spend more time doing their planning their holidays and planning sports events and school trips than they do actually even planning the business so if you need some help in that space obviously Dagmar is the guru in that space if you haven't yet uh, engaged funding connection to help you with your business plan and um, it's such a good discipline to get in place then obviously money mastery is the second area we spoke about is um you know we're finding too often this is one of the biggest stress levels for business owners out there is the numbers the money is people are lying awake at night worrying about cash flow lying awake at night worrying about how can i pay my suppliers wondering how am i going to get the money to fund the expansion um, i need to get stock to launch a new program and very often it's the it's poor financial management that is actually the cause of of the stress and um, very often people aren't tracking aren't tracking the numbers properly aren't using proper bookkeeping software or we've got the bookkeeping software but it isn't being updated properly um, often we haven't spent the time with our bookkeeper or accountant to wire our books properly so we're not getting a proper picture of what's actually happening and this is why I mentioned people lying awake at night and we are seeing it around the world we are seeing health issues we are seeing relationship issues all these things are breaking down because of this the, the financial stress so in business it's an area we have to get on top of so one of the things to do is just get into that habit from day one just like in your personal capacity having a personal budget and knowing what our personal break even is and our monthly expenses our business we need to do this regularly not just a budget that we do when we launch the business because we find often businesses have a budget when they apply for funding get the money and then the budget is never looked at again it needs to be a living breathing document that we're regularly tracking how are we doing where's the money going and is the budget panning out as we thought it would be because if we're not looking at it regularly we can't make running repairs we can't make changes we can't make improvements to these areas so we've got to be looking backwards as well as forwards and uh, this is how we're going to make proper decisions so for me three things we should have in your business a budget it's like driving a car you need a windscreen if you're looking forward through what what are we expecting what does the weather look like up ahead are there any potholes are there any trees in the middle of the road that we should be uh, looking out for so that's what your budget is that we should be updating it regularly also reporting like driving a car we should have a, a rear view mirror that we're looking backwards through and see where have we been so in the business context that would be your monthly reports right your management pack your your monthly profit and loss account your balance sheet your cash flows you know are we looking at those numbers regularly so that we can see where has the business been so that's important but you consider this in business where the budget the windscreen is big right your budget is where we should be looking most of the time our winter our rear view mirror is a lot smaller right that's looking at equally important but there's a lot of people we meet that are only looking backwards they're only looking at last month's financials it's like driving a car only looking in the rear view mirror we need to look we need to use both of these uh tools 
to help navigate the business. And then importantly, dashboards. Have you constructed a dashboard where at a, at a glance you can see the key vital statistics, the key measures, the key performance indicators in your business? You know, have you, like driving a car, you can, you can be listening to the radio, you can be drinking a cup of coffee and chatting to the person next to you in the car, and you're still very aware of what's happening on the road around you. And at a glance, you can look down at your dashboard and look for any warning lights. Is everything green? Is there anything with an amber light or any red flashing lights that mean I'd better pull over straight away and open the hood and find out why that red light is on? But if we're not, without that dashboard, we, we don't know, are there any warnings? So sometimes there's the anxiety, or we might actually be doing better than we realize, and there's no warning around it. So obviously budget's a, a key one that we should be looking at. Here's a very simple budget, as simple as it needs to be. And obviously we can have some very detailed budgets and forecasting tools. Some of you might even do a discounted cash flow analysis in your business. There's many different ways of forecasting the financials, but we have to have a clear picture of where we're going. Otherwise we're just gonna be shooting in the dark. Another key thing, if you haven't done it recently, is to recalculate your break-even target. In other words, what are the, the total sales we need to do to cover not just our fixed costs, but our variable costs as well? We find very often people aren't calculating this number correctly, and people are chasing the wrong target. But the formula, if anybody needs it, is you take your fixed cost divided by your gross margin percentage, will tell you what your, what your sales target should be. And um, what we're finding very often is, is like we spoke about two slides ago, people aren't tracking their numbers properly. We're having fixed costs that are getting loaded as variable costs, variable costs loaded as fixed costs. And what we are finding is we're getting an incorrect gross margin percentage. So when people calculate their sales target, they're calculating the wrong number and very often are tracking a target that is too short, uh, too low. And we have month on month where people are patting themselves on the back saying, this is great, I've hit my target and paying commissions to salespeople and all sorts. Come the end of the year, you meet with your accountant, you find out you've made a loss. Well, to be honest, you won't even need to wait till the end of the year to know you're making a loss. You'll find cash flow dries up <laughs> and um, because those numbers aren't being tracked. So it's an exercise to do regularly. Double check your break even because those numbers can change very quickly with a few simple changes it's also it's a lovely early warning sign to know if your you know suppliers are putting up costs without you realizing it it's a lovely early warning sign that you might have stock uh, pilfering uh, pilferage happening in your business um, these are some lovely with having a good dashboard with these areas you get warning well in advance that when something is going wrong so you know you can do something about it and obviously time mastery is a key one you know, we we all are born equal, right? We all get given equal amount of hours in every day. But how we use those hours is very different person to person. And that's one of the biggest um, dividers or something that's, uh, that's distinct between the people that achieve at a very high level and the people that don't is are we managing our time? You know, at the start of every day, are we 100% clear? What are my high value activities? Do I make sure that I get those things done first before we get pulled into distractions, before we get pulled into other people's um, mess, let's call it. So if anybody's read the book, um, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Covey teaches this matrix in time management. And the idea behind it is a lot of people spend a lot of their day in what he calls the zone of distraction, doing things that are not urgent nor important. People go to work and then be off on social media or cleaning out old emails, gossiping, you know, watching TV and working hours. Yeah, people just doing stuff, distracted, mindlessly filling hours and getting nothing done. Other times people are doing urgent tasks, but that aren't important because nowadays everything's urgent, right? There's a knock on the door, there's a ringing telephone, there's a WhatsApp message that has a sound effect, there's an email that has a sound effect. There's just a constant barrage of stuff that's, that always feels urgent, but are we filtering to say, yes, this feels urgent, but is it actually important? Is this an activity that's actually gonna get me closer towards my goals? 
And if it's not getting us towards our goals, then we're living in the zone of what he calls delusion. Where we're kidding ourselves, we're pretending we're getting important stuff done, but we actually aren't. At the same time, we've got to be conscious that every day, things will turn up that are urgent and important. The zone of demand. We have to be ready for this. We have to understand that there will be days that a key, a key staff member won't turn up for work. If you have a retail store, for instance, and your, your, your front of house salesperson on the, on the sales desk in a retail store doesn't turn up, what happens? You as the owner of the business, you're going to have to stand at that desk. If you, head, if you own a restaurant and your chef doesn't turn up for work, that's the zone of demand, right? You have to drop what you were going to be doing and you're going to be in the kitchen doing the work. If, you're, if, you're, if an important customer arrives unexpectedly for a visit, you can't say, go away, I'm updating my cash flow forecast or go away, I'm doing my business plan. You're going to have to stop doing that and, um, and take care of the stuff. So we've got to know that this stuff is going to happen. So are we factoring that in? So the important way to do that is to understand what is your important stuff and do it before it becomes urgent. If you know you need to spend quality time with your good customers, go and visit them at a schedule that suits you so that they don't need to do surprise visits. If you know you need to spend time doing your cash flow forecast, put time aside to do it before it becomes urgent. If you know you need a backup chef, for instance, make sure you spend time training up another team, key member, team member to cover that person. Have you taken time to maybe have a database of other chefs that could work part-time that you could pull in on a daily rate or an hourly rate? Do you have contingency plans in place? But those contingency plans don't just happen. We need to put time aside to build those plans. We need to put time aside to train the team. We need to put time aside to build our plans. So we call this working on the business, doing the important things long before they become urgent. And if you don't mind in the chat box, I'd love to just ask that question. Who at the moment can say they consciously put time aside to work on the business? And if you do do that, how many hours per week are you putting aside to work on the business, to train your team, to put new systems in place, doing marketing, that's on the business, right? We don't, we don't wait for a bad month when sales drop to do more marketing. We should be doing marketing all the time. So the rule of thumb is three to five hours a week we should be putting aside to build our personal skills, to train the team, to put new systems in place. Um, four hours per day, brilliant. 20 hours per week, that's amazing, Debbie. That's a great metric to do for us. Uh, what, Dagmar, once a week? But yeah, still get interrupted. So even with the best intentions, life happens. So we've got to, we've got to factor that in and understand the, 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 there's always going to be things happening to pull you away from doing this. But the first step is to put that aside. So the other thing as well is we want to have a goal around it. You know, often, often the time just gets absorbed because we haven't also documented in it. Have you actually put time in your diary for self-development? Have you put time in the diary for fitness? Have you put time in the diary, block time aside to spend quality time with important people? We need to be booking that time just to, like we would book appointments with our customers. We need to put recreational and recharging time. As I say, you need to be sharpening this. Are you taking time to rest and build your strength? So we, you see here, we've been going for a while already. And we're still only just on the foundation areas of what we call mastery. The fourth area is what we call delivery mastery. It's a key foundation area. I've put this barber shop up here. There's a great example of this, a guy called Michael, Michael Gerber, who's a famous author, tells a story which epitomizes this really well. He has his famous, uh, he has his favorite barber shop that he goes for a haircut every month. And he walks in the front door, there's a, a lady at the reception that always, she looks up and she makes a funny joke when she says hello, it puts a smile on his face. He sits down and... Um, as he gets a haircut, they give him a cup of coffee and they fill it up as often as he would like, his bottomless cup of coffee. And that is his favorite barber shop. And we probably all have something similar, right? Now, what happens one day, he walks into the barber shop. There's a different lady sitting behind the reception. He can see the usual lady. She's in the back office doing a stock take, perhaps. And the lady at the reception 
looks up and just says hello. Doesn't make the joke, doesn't give the little routine that she usually does. And he doesn't get the, the endorphins, you know, the happy, the happy um, chemicals that we get when we feel good. So yeah, it is all right. So he sits down, they give him a haircut, same barber, same haircut, but he didn't get offered a cup of coffee. Two things that he's come to know and expect every haircut haven't happened. But the haircut was perfectly fine. It was exactly the same haircut he always gets. What happened next month when he needed a haircut again? We know the draw, right? He went somewhere else. He decided instead of turning left, I'm going to try that other barber shop down the, down the road. They'd found out just how he likes it. They didn't systematize it. They didn't train the team around that stuff. They didn't put checklists in place to make sure that every customer gets offered a cup of coffee. And the little funny greeting that the lady makes, they hadn't put it as a little script and stuck it as a poster behind the counter. It's a very simple example, but we see this all the time where people fall down on this. And we took away that consistency because consistency is what people want. Consistency is what makes us people feel safe. And consistency is what gets people coming back again and again and again. So you've got to work out in your business. What are those little um, routines, those little rituals that we've got to make sure happen all the time? Why have I put this logo up here? You know, we, put, we talk about McDonald's all the time as such an amazing example of um, a success area of consistency, right? They don't make, I mean, we could always have a debate on it if anybody disagrees, but they def I don't think they make the best hamburger in the world, right? They don't make the healthiest hamburger in the world. They don't make the cheapest hamburger in the world. Why have they built the largest hamburger? Or how have they built the largest hamburger at real estate company in the world, right? Consistency. They found out just what people want and then they make sure they can replicate that again and again and again. You know that anywhere in the world, if you're hungry and you're in a foreign country and you see those golden arches in the distance, you know you can go in there, it's going to be clean, there's going to be reasonably priced fast service food, there'll be a clean toilet for your kids to go to. Um, they are famous for that, okay? So decide right now what your business, what, what are the fundamentals that you can't get wrong in your business and document that stuff. That's why franchise businesses have such a high success rate compared to non-franchise businesses. If those of you don't know the stats, non-franchise business, there's variants of this, but globally, only 50% of businesses survive two years. And of the people that's of the businesses that survive two years, only 10% survive 10 years. Out of interest, if you are already in the 10 years survivors club, put a put a number 10 in the in the chat, I'd love to know who's been going for more than 10 years if you're already outside or put the actual number of how long you've been in business. Because it's a key one to get past that. And part of it is because we don't have the consistency in place. Are we not getting the loyalty? Like, wow, 14 years. And Simango, 11 years, fantastic. Also in the Survivors Club. Anybody else that's past 10 years? And those that aren't there yet, let's get this stuff right to make sure you also get in the the 10 years survivors and thrivers club but this is one of the key foundations so you see where i'm at here is these slides that i've shared with you cornelius also 10 years fantastic um we've been covering foundations right we've got to get the foundations right now you'll see these blocks get a little bit smaller which means it gets a little bit easier all these other areas are no, nothing's easy right the last thing i'm saying is easy any of you that have been in business for even six months will know that it's not easy uh, and those veterans that are 14 years plus, you'll know for sure over the years. Cecilia, five years, brilliant, halfway there. So um, the idea behind it is it's going to get easier. But all these other areas are so much easier if you have your foundations in place. Very often I have businesses come to me, say, I, I, I need some help. We've got They've got an issue with team. They've got an issue with marketing. There's an issue somewhere else. But we actually find that the, the problem is actually in the foundations. If we'd fixed the foundations right, these other problems either wouldn't have happened or would have been a lot easier to fix. So now we're going to look at niche, which is all about getting your profits up. The first thing is, have you documented clearly in all your marketing messages why you are better than other people? Your value proposition, your unique selling proposition. Have you got real clarity? Because if you can, if your customers can see that that you are better than your peers, they will pay you more money. They will not be as price sensitive. 
Uh, oh, we've got Ian on the call. Ian is 17 years now. Congratulations. That's, that's the biggest number we've had so far. Waterfall class and aluminium being a 17 years. Fantastic. And well done on that. That's um, so no price competition. So one of the first things we want to do to help you in your marketing um, system is to get that marketing messaging right. Some of you know the, the consumer adoption curve where you can see market penetration of any product or industry over time. I won't go into detail on it. We do separate workshops and training around all of this. I'm just touching on it. But the main point is a lot of businesses get to this level of, of becoming a commodity where we talk about early or late majority, where there's lots of people doing what you do. And somebody goes, somebody says, I need an electrician. I need a plumber. I need an insurance company. We go into Google and you search plumber, electrician, insurance company, and 50 hits come up of other companies to do. So obviously it's natural then for any business, for any customer to say, well, let's contact three of them. Whoever gives me the best price, that's going to get my business. Because we just, we, we assume that they're all just the same. Whereas if you can do the work, do some studies inside the business, say, how can we innovate? How can we do things a little bit better than the other plumbers? How can we make our plumbing, our electrical business just a little bit better? What is that uniqueness that we can offer? And there's a whole process that we can take you through. If anybody wants some help in this space, we coach people through that and help identify your unique selling proposition. What is it that makes you that little bit different? And if we can get that message into our marketing material, your phone is going to ring a lot more. You're going to get a lot more inquiries. And at the same time, if we can work out a guarantee system, in other words, finding out what scares people the most when they use a company like you and we can put a guarantee in place, that is not going to happen. You find your conversion rate increases a lot more. So you not only just get more leads, but you get a higher conversion rate and you can imagine what that does to your sales and your profitability. So that's one of the first things to get right. Uh, I didn't mention earlier on, um, for all of Dagmar's clients, anybody on the call, anybody that's linked to Funding Connection, we do offer a free coaching session. If you're an established business up and running and um, you need some help, there might be an issue that you're facing inside the business. Um, you might want to drill down on one of these areas that I'm taking you through. I know Slindila and Kirsty on the call, if one of you could just put the link into the chat box on Facebook and on, um, on the Zoom call here. There's just a web page that you can land on and you get access or send your details through and we'll set up a free session for you. We do a free free consult, no obligation. You know, if there's an issue you want to tackle inside the business and maybe even looking at that unique selling proposition, let me know. We'll sit down together in person or on Zoom and let's see if we can help you with that area inside the business. Because that's the first step in terms of getting marketing results. The first step is let's get the messaging right. Let's... Um, that's going to help a lot with the messaging and right, all the rest of it gets a lot easier as well. We can then um, we can then start looking at what we call the business chassis. We use the word leverage. Does everybody know what uh, what a lever is? Right, lever is a, how do we find an easier way of doing things? And we teach this concept in marketing as well in terms of what are what is a simpler way of getting much better marketing results. So the other reason we, we also call it the business chassis. A lot of cars look very different on the outside. But if you strip away the badge, strip away the bodywork, um, the leather seats, and strip it right down to the chassis, you'll find that very often it's the very same business, just presented differently. And a good example is Audi, Volkswagen, Porsche. A lot of their models share the same chassis, but very different car on the outside. So what we want to do with you is... Um, Put the is, is is teach you how to strip your car down to the bare chassis, understand the key metrics that drive your business, and then we'll help you re-engineer those numbers to grow your profitability, profitability quite substantially. So how do we do that? We call it the five ways. Oh, here's an example of a chassis we found a little a few years ago. This is a lady in the in the United Kingdom. I don't know if you can read that font, it's quite small there. She bought this scrap uh, Volkswagen Beetle at a scrapyard for 200 pounds. Took it home into her garage, stripped it down to the bare chassis, rebuilt it, rebuilt it into this replica Porsche, and she sold it for 25,000 pounds. That's a pretty cool uh, return on investment, right? And this is what we want to show you now, is how do, how do you look at the chassis? 
see of your business, understand what are the key marketing numbers in your business, and then what can you do to rebuild your business and make it a lot more valuable. How does that sound? Business chassis five ways. We're gonna have some fun with this now. So the first key thing here is we need to test and measure. We need to know exactly what our marketing numbers are, our marketing metrics. And then if we know what our numbers are, we'll be able to do. So remember, a business doesn't speak English. A business speaks numbers. You don't have a business that had a good month or a bad month. You had a business that was on target or wasn't on target. So we don't just want, um, we don't just want target numbers. Uh, sorry, we don't just want gut feel. You know, we don't want to say, oh, leads were down last month. Or, oh, we had a, our customer retention is good or our customer retention is bad. We need an actual metric to see in black and white, how is that going? All right. I see uh, Slendil has just put the link on the, on the chat group in the Zoom. There's a link there if you want to reach out and book that free session. Ashley, if you don't mind, put it on the Facebook chat as well for the people that are tuning in on the Facebook Live. So we want to really get a, a real handle on your numbers. So this is what it looks like. If I had to ask each of you right now, how many customers did you work with last month? You could tell me. If I asked you what was your revenue or your sales last month, you could tell me. And if I asked you what was your profit, either your gross profit or your net profit, or hopefully you're looking at both of those metrics, you could probably tell me, right? And those are numbers that you would get from your bookkeeping software, um, or you could contact your accountant, your bookkeeper, and they could tell you those. But as you can see here, those are results, right? Those are the outcomes that you had last month. What we also want to do is look at the, the, the metrics that cause those results. And you'll see here, this is why I call it the five ways numbers. We want to see your five ways business chassis. So what you'll see in this example, customers, revenue, and profit I've highlighted in red. Because these are metrics that come after the equals sign. These are the results. You can't change what comes after the equals. You can change what comes before. So we want to start measuring. And if you aren't doing this yet, you need to start tracking each of these numbers. If you need help doing it, reach out. We will show you how. Firstly, we need to be counting every month how many leads did we get? How many inquiries? How many phone calls? How many requests for proposal? How many human beings walked into our store? Uh, how many people clicked on the, the, the buy now button on our website, the inquiry form on our website? We want to track that every month to see our leads going up or down. If we are also tra tracking number of customers, in other words, how many people actually bought from us, we can take customers divided by leads times by 100 now we know our conversion rate. So you see how useful it is already just to know these two metrics because number of leads will tell you how good you are at marketing. Conversion rate will tell you how good you are at sales. They are very different skills. So some of you will have different team members responsible for each of those areas. Um, sometimes it might be the same resp uh, persons responsible. But we're all, some of us are great at lead generation, rubbish at sales. Others are great at sales, rubbish at lead generation. So this is going to help us understand where you need some help. Now we want to know what is the average number of transactions. Some of your customers bought from you once. Some of your customers had two or three or four invoices. This is just a fictitious business, obviously, an example I'm giving you. The average for last month was two. And what was the average spend? Some of your customers spent $50. Some spent uh, $200. The average for last month was $100. i am using dollars if you don't mind because we work with people in multiple currencies. So we find dollars, uh, dollars make it simpler. And actually, I, I quite like dollars. I don't know about you guys. So uh, if you multiply that out, 1,000 customers at an average of two transactions per customer, an average spend of $100, you multiply that out. Now we know why the revenue was $200,000. We obviously don't get to keep all of that. 75% of that went to uh, our costs. So this business has a profit margin of 25%. Now we know where that is. So we've obviously got, um, Howard, thanks for your message. There's six years in business, fantastic, Howard. The, uh, now we know why we have $50,000 profit. Now, you could obviously split this down a step further. You could go gross profit and then net profit. And uh, there's a tool that we use with our clients to help track these metrics and uh, where we actually look at gross and net. But for the purpose of this example, I've just kept it simpler. So now you know your numbers. What we find is what, uh, uh, the tools we use, once you start tracking these numbers, focusing on these numbers, you find already they start actually getting a little bit better on their own. 
But what we do in a, a coaching program and those clients that want us helping them grow their profits and want us working with them on their marketing, we teach a number of different strategies that you can implement into your business to start growing each of these numbers. So you can see there's well over 300 strategies there that you can focus on. Now, some of you might just want to work on one of these areas. And we often do that. We'll say like every three months, let's pick one area. So for the next three months, let's work on margins. Then the, the following quarter, let's put strategies in place to improve conversion rates, for instance. So you might focus area by area over time, or you might want to put strategies in place to work on all five areas simultaneously. It depends on your workload, your capacity, how big your team is, and how fast you can work. We'll see how fast you can start implementing these strategies. But to illustrate the power of this, imagine we can improve each of those five areas by just 10%. So we put some strategies in place, get 10% more leads. So we, we do some telemarketing. We start going to some industry events. We up our Google budget, our Facebook marketing budget, whatever it might be. We start getting on LinkedIn. There's all sorts of strategies we can do to get uh, sending out flyers, whatever it might be. We get an extra 10% more leads per month. If at the same time, we put some strategies in place to improve our conversion rate putting a guarantee system in place, like I spoke about. Who, who has gone on a sales training course? If not ever in the last two, three years, who has put their, their sales team on a sales training course? Have you actually read a book on sales? There's so many things we can do to educate ourselves to get better at sales. Um, Rebranding the business, and better quality websites, better quality LinkedIn profiles, upping our Google search. There's plenty of things we can do. And all we're looking for is a little 10% improvement in conversion rate. And look what happens here. There's the power of compounding interest, right? 10% in those two areas get you 21% more customers because of compounding interest, right? At the same time, are we putting strategies in place to improve the number of transactions or how often our customers come back? Is everybody keep, keeping an accurate database of all of their customers? Are you reaching out to that database regularly? Are you sending newsletters out to your database? Are you sending your customers... Uh, birthday cards are you um you just go to the restaurant game right i mean i haven't eaten in a spur for a long time but every year both of my kids i get an sms from spur to each of my kids saying happy birthday tell your dad there's a 50 rand voucher <laughs> come on in and let's celebrate your birthday together that's database management and that is gold what are you doing to get your customers coming back more often loyalty programs multiple in uh, multiple purchase cards you know buy 10 coffees get your 11th coffee free those strategies work in all industries work, but they need some work you know so often what we're doing with people is helping identify the strategy and then let's apply the science to make sure the strategy works importantly what strategies are you putting in place to improve your average dollar sale to improve your average spend per customer mcdonald's we spoke about earlier has anybody ever been to a McDonald's, bought a hamburger, and they haven't asked you the magic words, can I supersize you? Do you want fries with that? Can I upsize you? They ask that each and every time. And that's just one strategy of many that you can use to improve your average dollar sale. If you're in the restaurant trade, there's so much we can do in that space with you. Have you trained your your waiters on how to cross sell, how to upsell. Are you making sure that there's little strategies like don't, don't go to the table and say, would anybody like a pudding or a dessert? You'll see some restaurants, they actually bring you the dessert trolley and they show you the dessert. <laughs> Just that one strategy improves the cross selling or the upselling substantially because now it's kinesthetic. There's a tactile where people can actually see and smell a dessert rather than just seeing uh, some words on a menu. There's lots of little strategies you can do to improve your average spend. And see what happens here. 10% in those four areas increases your sales revenue by 46%. Powerful, right? And at the same time, if we're working on our margins, we're putting strategies in place to make sure we're watching our costs, we're doing regular price increases, we are, there's all sorts of things to do around our margins and improving our profitability. A 10% improvement in the margins. And look there, you've just got an extra $30,000 per month. And that goes to you, the owner. That goes to repaying the, the finance. That goes <laughs> repaying your business loan, repaying the, 
if you draw the money out of your bond or whether you drew the money from a program or from a bank, it's got to be paid up. And uh, that happens with profits. So whatever your current numbers are, um, and as I say, if you need some help working out your current numbers, book some time with us. Um, but whatever your current numbers are, if you can get 10% in each of those five areas, you are going to get a 61% uplift in, um, in, in your profits. This is a key thing that just so you're clear, we work on this with our clients and coaching, because obviously a lot of clients is, there's all sorts of different levels of investment in coaching. Um, and we have, we have retainers ranging from a couple of thousand rand a month to many thousand rand a month. But we always believe that there should be a very quick return on investment in coaching. We look to find our fee as quick as possible. And obviously one of the ways we do that is helping people grow their profitability using systems like this. So set yourself the goal. What would you do with that additional profit? Is it toys that you want to buy? Is it experiences you want to go on? We need to, it comes right back down to, I mentioned earlier on, destination mastery. We need to have the goals. The, the brain doesn't think in numbers. You say the brain's $30,000 profit, the brain goes, eh, whatever. The brain thinks in pictures, right? We need to have a clear picture of where, where that money is going to go. And that's what inspires action and gets us to take action and do this stuff. So here's some of the strategies we'll help you work through for lead generation, strategies to improve your conversion rates, lots of strategies to get people coming back more often. What are the strategies to improve your margins, et cetera? So we'll help you through that process. And just for fun, if we work from that same base and double each of those five areas, look what happens. The $50,000 business becomes a $1.6 million business. No, I, I'm just saying, uh, I'm just qualifying that. That's just for fun. We've never seen a business double all five areas, but it doesn't mean you can't double uh, some of those areas. And imagine what your business could look like with some concentrated effort working in this space. So I love this quotation. We've all heard of, we all know Warren Buffett, right? Arguably the world's most famous and best investor. And I love this quote. It's not unnecessary to do so you don't need to do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results. Little improvements consistently over time. That's how you get the improvements. So who do you have holding you accountable? That's asking you regularly. That's what we do in coaching. We, we see our clients, most of our clients we see every week or every second week. And we go ask that question. What have you done to improve your business since I saw you last? <laughs> what strategy have you implemented? Has it made a small difference or has it made a big difference? Has it made no difference? What can we do to tweak it, to push it, to pull it and help get it a lot better? But you won't know if these strategies are working if you aren't testing and measuring. So we need to be looking at these numbers regularly. Okay. Sure. So there we at. Oh, sorry. That's two levels in, right? We've got our foundations in place to make sure it's a stable business. We've been doing some work on the marketing and sales to make sure we're getting consistent cash flow and we are profitable. At that point, you still, as the business owner, are still working really hard, right? So we now need to get this business that's working efficiently so we can start freeing up some time. So this is where you want to drill down on leverage. And leverage is all about systems. And um, sadly, whether you like systems or not, this is the, the backbone or the key success area inside your business. We find there's, um, there's a lot of businesses will only grow to the level of their systems. All right. If, uh, if you have systems that are wired for a million rand a month business, you'll never have a 10 million rand a month business. Those systems are going to fall down. So we need to revisit the systems regularly. And this is where we'll be able to start um, freeing up some time. So the guideline around this, um, so for those of you that, as you can see in this process, if you're a, a smaller, either a startup or a smaller business, we usually get to this a little bit later. The first focus is just get the profitability up, get the basics in place, get the marketing plan in place, and then we get to systems. For those of you that are on the call that are a bigger established business, we often, that's often where we get called in for the bigger businesses because we find bigger businesses, they've got a marketing department, they've got a, 
uh, one or two or three or four or five accountants on the team. They, they don't need help with financial management. There's a whole marketing department. Our bigger clients have external marketing agencies doing their marketing and sales for them. So they often don't need us in that space. Very often, this is where we get on board and help them either put base systems in place from the ground up, or we find most businesses have got systems, but they're kind of all over the show. There'll be uh, some of the systems are in the owner's head. Some of the systems are in a file and a cub cupboard somewhere. Other systems are in a laptop. <laughs> Don't mind you smiling. You see it as often as I do, right? Most businesses out there. Or their systems are there, but it hasn't been updated. Just about every business I work with, when we get into the space, one of the first things I ask is, can I have your company organization chart? And without fail, nine out of 10 businesses will go, oh, yes, uh, where is it? <laughs> and they, they'll ask around and somebody will have the organization chart and it was probably put together three years ago and hasn't been updated ever since. So the idea on the systems is we need to get this right, but updated all the time. It's, it's, it's never a one-off job. Sometimes it's a lot of work getting it done in the first place, but then it's fine tuning as we go. So those of you needing help in this space, use this as a little checklist to see how are we doing, what have we got in place and what do we need to get in place. And this is the process I coach people through to get their systems ready. Because obviously, if you're going to grow a business, we can't grow that next level without systematizing what's working so far. If you have one branch and you're about to open branch number two, please, 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 let's make sure we spend some time together and get the systems right first. Because you can imagine without systems in place, any cracks that are in the foundations of the first business, you're going to multiply those, you're going to carry across those same cracks into multiple business. So we want to make sure that it's documented and then we can start rolling out. So systems is also an important first step before franchising a business. You don't want to open five new branches without the systems in place, clearly documented. And obviously systems are really important for selling a business because any, any potential buyer that's looking at buying your business is going to say, well, yes, I want this business, but I want the owner gone and I want to run the business myself. Can I run this business without the owner? And if you can't go to the buyer of this, uh, your potential buyers of your business and show him, here's the systems file, here's our procedures, this is how it all holds together. If, if, if they can't see that, how on earth are they going to know that they, with confidence that they can actually run the business without you? Because typically most buyers don't want the business with the owner because that means the owner is going to be taking the salary that the new owner of the business probably wants for him or herself, unless they're wanting to buy it for passive income. Cecilia, you agree a thousand percent. I like that. Thank you. Uh, somebody that lives and breathes systems. I like to hear that. So here's the quick, uh, here's the quick guide, right? First step, vision statement. We spoke about that. You see it ties into mastery. What is this company's core purpose? What is the, the, the reason we get out of bed every morning? The vision statement can't be to make the owner rich, right? The, that's not the vision that staff are going to buy into, right? So what is your higher purpose? What is the impact you're making on the world? What is the impact that you're making in the local community? Is it documented? Is it up on the, on the wall? And is it meaningful? Then have you documented a mission statement? In other words, how are we going to achieve that vision? What are the products and services that we're going to sell? What are the kind of staff we want to hire? What are the kind of customers we want to work with? And what makes us unique? What makes us different? What makes us special? Those four elements need to be documented inside our mission and then have we documented our culture statement our values what are the points of culture that guide the behavior of your staff we can say to people listen i don't know what the values are in your home but when you're under this roof working for this company this is the behavior that is acceptable this is how we treat one another we need to document that stuff all right so those are the first three steps once we've got that right We've got to start looking at SMART goals because obviously your vision statement is your 100-year goal. Your vision statement might simply be to be the very best plumbing business in wherever our geography is, in the um, in Mpumalanga, right? Or it might be to be the very best plumbing company in all of Africa. You know, that's what we've got to be clear on the vision. The SMART goals, as we're now not looking 100 years from now, SMART goals need to be our three-year goals, our one-year goal, our quarterly goals, our monthly goals. Is it a revenue target? Is it how many branches we want to open? Is it how many widgets per day we want to be um, manufacturing? Have we got real clarity on those goals that we are tracking against? 
like I mentioned earlier, organization chart. Have we clearly documented the structure of the business, who reports to who, who's responsible for what? If you've got very clear growth plans, I recommend doing two organization charts. One of how the company looks right now and another organization chart of what you look like, what your company is going to look like in one or two years time. Um, a lot of you that are working with Dagmar, she'll have done this with you or she will be doing it with you as part of your funding. You know, people are going to say, well, if I need funding and this is going to be, it's going towards salaries and structure, obviously anybody that's looking at lending you money will want to see, well, how is this company going to look if I give you the money? How are you going to use it? So it's not just your marketing plan. It's also your organizational operational plan that they will be wanting to look at. Once we have an organization chart, has everybody on that organization chart got a clear job description or what we call a position contract? So you know what's expected of each person in the organization. And importantly, does everybody in the company, does each of those position contracts cover the key performance indicators that each person will be tracked against? If it's a salesperson, it's you know, how many phone calls, how many meetings, how many uh, new customers per month, for instance. If it's a if it's a bookkeeping person, is the the due date of your management pack every month, the debtors targets, the you know for every role there should be a productivity or a results key performance indicator, so people can track for themselves and know if they're doing a good job or not. Um, and then have we got clear how to systems, how to manuals, our checklists, our policies, our procedures that we can document our way of doing things. It might be checklists. There might be detailed process user guides. A lot of companies now are using video for their how-to systems and just putting together a library of videos to say, this is our way of you know, cleaning up an office at the end of every day. This is our way of our pre-trip pre <laughs> departure reports, our customer service standards, all that kind of stuff our dress code, all that sort of thing needs to be documented. Um, and then the last point is all of the stuff, where does somebody find it? And how often do we review it? So in the past, it used to be a good old fashioned, uh, uh, what do you call it, ring bound folder <laughs> or file. And some companies would have three or four files with all of the stuff inside it. Nowadays, it's most people have it electronically in a uh, OneDrive folder or a Google folder, um, a SharePoint system for those of you that are Microsoft users. And obviously there's some really amazing software now. You can actually get apps that hold this together where even your staff can on their phone have access to all of this. So people know that if they want the latest position contract, they don't have to phone you, the owner, they can just go into the app and get it. If they want a clarity on the vision statement, they know where it is. If they're not sure on somebody's key performance indicators, there's one place where all that is accessible and there's a regular review. So you can imagine this isn't a quick exercise that you just put the systems together. For some businesses, it's a quick exercise over the space of a month or two, cleaning it up. And for other businesses, it can take a year or so documenting this process. So if you need help on any of that, give me a shout and we can guide you through that process. Because with these systems, now we can go to the next level and look at team. With proper systems in place, now the team can run the systems, right? You might have heard that saying, they say systems should run the business, people should manage the systems, and your job is to lead the team. But you've got to get those systems in place. So A, now the team can take more ownership of the business. So if you're going concern and you spend some time getting the systems in place, you can train people up on the systems and they can say, oh, I get it now. And they can kick you out. As, a, as an owner of a business, you want to make yourself redundant, right? They can say, right, let everybody run the business for you and you can go in and build business number two or retire or whatever else it might be. Um, the important thing as well with systems is we get the systems in place and then we can start hiring and growing the team. We can start opening multiple branches now because that's at team level because we now have the systems. We've got our policies and procedures put in place. We can start expanding a lot faster with confidence because we now know we can replicate. So the key part as well with team is also around recruitment. And just put in the chat box, has anybody ever done a formal course in how to recruit effectively? <laughs> 
this is an area a lot of business owners struggle with is uh, very few people have been trained in recruitment and often get it wrong. Hire the wrong people and that's not good for the company and it's not good for the employee because then we put the wrong person into the wrong job and there's unhappiness in both ways. You get the owner of the business frustrated, we put the wrong person in the role and then obviously it's not fair for the person we've hired because we've, we haven't run a proper process and there's, um, ah, brilliant, somebody has. And there's this disconnect. So um, if you need any help in that space as well, but one of the first points is before recruiting, we should go back to systems. So you see what we use the systems for this process, these six steps for is always go back a level before you go. We, we teach a system that we call the four hour recruitment process and um, help people recruit good people. But before I teach anybody how to recruit, the first thing I do is go to leverage and I'll say, well, before we go to recruitment, show me the position, uh, show me the organization chart, show me the job description, show me the induction procedure that you're going to be using to set this person up for success. If we haven't got that right yet, we first do that, then we go to the market and start recruiting for candidates. Otherwise, it's a recipe for disaster. What do you think of this quote? Tom Peters put this years ago. Most employees are motivated, energetic, committed, enthusiastic, and loyal. And often people, I put this up and people disagree with me strongly, but then you qualify the rest of the quote, right? Why do you get some amazing people that are miser miserably unhappy at work? Yeah, is it a case that the, that the owner of the business has recruited the wrong person in the first place? Or is it that the owner of the business hasn't put the structures in place to help people achieve what they want to achieve? Because there's, you know, I meet I meet business owners all the time that'll say things like, oh, Trevor, you don't understand. It's so hard to get good people out there. You have to say, really? You look at all these amazing companies out there that are doing such amazing things and you say, like, pick any big building on the skyline. Is that, is that business full of rubbish people? You know, there's really amazing people out there. So the question you should be asking yourself is why would good people want to work for you? What are we doing to make this business as amazing as possible that we attract the right people that resonate with our values, that resonate with our vision and collectively we do some great stuff because there are great people out there. So this is some of the things you can look at inside. I'm not spending time on this. Um, yeah, obviously, what we find the most businesses, it's getting the, the earlier steps I've taken you through is the key focus. But it's quite self-explanatory, this. Are you driving this? Are you a present leader driving from the front, turning up every day? You know, it's hard to lead if you don't even pop into the office more than once a month. <laughs> you know, so what are we doing to, to make sure that, that everybody's on the same plane? Have we set the goals? Have we shared the goals with the team that everybody knows how we're tracking against it? Have you documented the rules of the game? Is there an action plan that everybody tracks against? With that in place, you can then support risk taking. So within those top three, four guides, then can people play to their own style and give people the freedom they need to express themselves within those boundaries? And importantly, a 100% involvement. Everybody needs to be turning up and pulling their weight. If you've got anybody on the team that's one of those toxic poison apples on the team is your job as the leader to fix that person maybe there's a there's a legitimate grievance that they have that hasn't been sorted out or maybe it's just the wrong person in the wrong job and your job is then to help them find another job where they will be happier either within your organization or help them um, or sort of have the tough conversations i mean we all we've all seen it right where somebody's really unhappy in a certain job not performing um we help them move on, they get a job in a different organization, suddenly they become a, a big performer. So it's about some, but we can't have the non-performers or the negative poisonous people on the team because that just pulls everybody down. And we need to be having those tough discuss those tough conversations. And then uh, we don't have time for it, but I did mention recruitment is a key thing. Uh, I did mention that we work on, there's a system called the four hour recruitment process which I absolutely love. Uh, it's one of my favorite areas of coaching is helping people recruit and teaching the system. Um, it's a whole separate workshop in its own right. Actually, Dagmar, maybe we should look at doing that as a, as a set session um, in a couple of months time. But if, 
if anybody wants some help on that, obviously reach out and uh, book that book that one to one session. I will take you through that. But here, oh, sorry, you see earlier on, I mentioned there's synergy and then results. There are two separate levels, but uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've just grouped them together because now we have systems in place. We have a team running the business. This is usually at some point here is where people would appoint a general manager to run the business for you. So you might be bringing in a heavyweight general manager at quite a high salary, or you might be promoting somebody from within the organization. Because if you have good systems in place, that's literally what the general manager is going to do, is going to be running the systems for you, right? So having a general manager run the business now lets you do other stuff. And I think called uh, Sir Richard Branson put this really well, is, you know, once you, once you learn how to run your first business, business number two, business number three, business number four becomes a lot easier. So um, I hope... I hope this has given everybody some ideas on where they need to be focusing on inside the business, possibly to know what, what level your business is at and some ideas you can start drilling down on. We run all sorts of programs. Uh, one of the programs we run is um, a program called Action Club, which is a one year business education program that actually drills down on each of these levels that I've shown you. And every month as a group, we get a group of business owners and every month you work on a specific area of the business and you actually go through a whole curriculum learning and implementing the stuff and at a much higher level. Um, that program is restarting very soon. So if anybody wants to know more about it, um, book some time with us or a coffee even, and we'll tell you more about it. But this is one of my favorite quotes. A guy called Jim Rowan sadly passed, passed away a couple of years ago. But don't wish your life was easy. Wish that you were better. And um, you got to work on yourself as well as your job, in fact, harder on yourself. So that's our role. I describe myself as a, we call it business coaches, but in reality, we coach human beings that happen to own businesses. And we focus very much on growing your, when you grow your own skill, your business grows as well. You can't, um, the one doesn't come through the other. So I hope that we'll, we'll stay on the call for, if anybody's got any questions and answers or anything like that, I'll stop sharing the screen. But uh, I hope there's some good ideas that you can take away and uh, implement in the business. If you want some help and you want help implementing this stuff a lot faster, obviously reach out with pleasure. We are here to help you. I've put a few examples out here. You know, I always like to, we don't hard sell coaching, but I believe everybody should have a coach if you want to achieve a lot more. And can you picture, can you picture any athlete, any sports team out there that doesn't have a coach, that doesn't have multiple coaches, you know, and you don't, you don't win the World Cup and then get a coach. <laughs> you get a coach that's going to help you get there. So if you want to achieve this sort of stuff inside your business, reach out to us. You might just want a quick 20-minute uh, Zoom call to bounce an idea. Um, or if you think you might want coaching and you might want to get into one of our programs, we'll do a full 90-minute uh, business assessment for you to help you really drill down on your business um, and help you in that space. So we'd love to help you grow your business. All I'd like to say is just don't do it on your own. You know, build yourself a support structure. You're already in Dagmar's network with a funding connection. You've got golden people on your side helping you. But, you know, make sure you get the right coaches, mentors. Even if it's not me, there's other great coaches out there, you know, who is going to help you keep you accountable and help you upskill. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. If anybody does want that session, click on that link that Slendila has sent you. And if anybody, I see we've got a couple of minutes before 10.30. So if anybody has to dash, it's been nice having you on the call. Um, but I see we've got a question or a hand raised. Yes, Trevor, how are you? Can you hear me? Perfectly, perfectly. Thank you so, so much. You know, I feel like saying, go on, go on. And we are on load shedding now. But earlier, oh, on, in, earlier on in the chat, I, I put in... Um, a concern. I've just yes. started up a business. It has been registered, but I also have some debt. So the question is, should I go the NDC way or with a little that I get from the business to pay much of the debts and stay stable? Ah. That's a great one. If you don't mind, I'd love uh, Dagmar. Would you, I'd, I'd love to get, uh, ask Dagmar to have a first response on that one. If you don't mind, this is a one that's a great one in her space. Okay, 
She yeah. knows me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, really. You know what? I the, the challenge is we need to dive so much deeper into all your personal information. I don't want to share that number one here. Uh, keep in mind, we are also sharing this on uh, on Facebook. Um, contact us. Uh, you can have 15 minutes free consultation with me. Then we just unravel everything. Uh, I'm not allowed definitely to do any debt uh, um, counseling. I'm not qualified for this, but I would be able to give you some, some advice. What is your next step? Is this okay for okay. you? Yeah. Thank you so, so much, Dagmar. Thank you Pleasure. very much. Thanks, Dagmar. And yeah, no, 100%. You're on the personal stuff like that. That's much better to do one to one on that side. Any other questions or observations? Or maybe Dagmar yourself first. Anything that you'd like to say to ra wrap, wrap us up? And if anybody does have any questions, just raise your raise your hand. I'm just going here maybe. at the moment through the, the comments. Okay. Um, so somebody says struggling to sign up first clients. Um my, my my tip is always make a list. Who can be your first clients? Okay, because there's no other way around it. You need to approach people. Don't think anybody will knock on your door. Yeah, that is a dream. It's not going to happen. Sure. Um, and I'm sure you all know me, but in any case, I'm straightforward. There is no gray area. I tell you <laughs> what I think is the best way. And also what I experience and what I learned is the best way. Okay. So, and then you have the list and then you uh, have the, at the end, you have the names where you really would like to work with. And then the beginning you have the names, you say, okay, it's worth a trial. Why do I suggest this? Because you're contacting the first people and you figure out, number one is decreases your nervousness the more often you have done this. And number two is you also learn what crazy questions your potential clients maybe ask. You are each and every time more and more prepared. Short tip again is uh, whoever speaks the most in a meeting feels uh, the best at the end of the day. So your job is asking questions and let the other person talk. Yeah, short and crisp here in this uh, um, environment. Um, Titus or Titus has uh, hands up. Just unmute yourself, please. We're not hearing you, Titus. Do you want to just check your you? I see you have unmuted, but we're not hearing you. Okay, so then let's do the the next one. I have you, Zee Lindler, oh, Josie. Yes, Lindile. Maybe uh, Titus, whilst Lindile asks her question, will you put your question in the chat and we will read it out since the sound is there. But Slee, up to you, over to you. Hi, guys. Um, it's actually not a question. Um, well, kind of a question. Not sure if you've uh, attended. Uh, we have a question, Zuki Swa, Zuki Zide on Facebook. She's yes. asking what are the procedures do uh, she needs to follow to apply for funding? So I don't know if you've covered that while I was on the line with the client, but I haven't heard her question being read. So I was just making sure you don't miss that one. Great, Dagmar will cover thanks, that. Thanks, yes, thanks very much. We haven't covered anything regarding uh, raising capital in this specific uh, meeting. Again, uh, I would suggest just set up a free consultation. We do 15 minutes, just short, figuring out what you need, how we can assist. Um, yes, uh, we just make sure that you get the link there. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Titus, try again. It, he's put his question here. Do you want to try and mute yourself? Uh, does this try? I'll, I'll, and I'll read, I'll read it out if you aren't able to unmute yourself. Okay, the sound the sound isn't coming through, so I'll just read it. So Taza said here, I, I just had a question about how do I get my fellow directors to prioritize such sessions because they look down on it. Okay, we've had that come up a few times. Sessions, uh, just put in the answer there, sessions like this as in workshops or sessions like uh, consultations on funding or coaching sessions, what, what's, what sessions in particular do they look down on, Titus? It's 
both sales and funding. <laughs> yeah, that is a great one. It's um, I'm. We've had a lot of experience in this. We, we've I'll, I can talk from the the training and coaching side, and then Dagmar, you can talk around the funding side. But what I've found is um, it's often a challenge. We often meet businesses where there's multiple decision makers. And we find there's one decision maker that's very keen to get coaching, to get training, to grow the business. Um, and then we sometimes find there's another decision maker, whether it's a director, partner in the business that, as you say, looks down and says, oh, we don't need that. And we find and um, and that is a challenge. It's I always recommend, you know, that, that's why I mentioned right at the start, actually, we 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 only work with people who want to be coached. So the last thing I ever want to do is be in a position where I'm coaching one one partner in a business and the other directors are, are kind of sabotaging the work that that person is trying to improve. So I always recommend, though, is you've got to just get the stakeholders in a room together and um, uh, with, the, with the supplier and just let's have a meeting of the mind and see who's open to what. Dagmar, I think you might have a different ex um, uh, a different take on that on your side. I have another just... idea. We're asking the karate squad to kick some butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, and if you don't mind, everybody, I have to excuse myself. I've just had my next meet. So I'm just going to excuse myself if you don't mind, Dagmar. But thank you, everybody. And um, it's been a great session. And I do look forward to catching each any of you individually. Dagmar, I'll catch you separately. But thank you for the invitation. Pleasure, Trevor. Take good care. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Um... It's difficult if you have directors. My my experience is always if somebody says I don't need it, has something to do with their ego. Okay, so they feel they are good enough, or they feel if I'm having a coach, they uh, they declare that they are not good enough to do the job. Um, maybe I think the idea from Trevor is a good one. Sit together. Uh, say, okay, what do we want to achieve? Make some action plan, okay? And then say, okay, are we able to achieve this with the expertise we have in-house? Does it make sense to find somebody from outside? I think also sharing this information that, hey, every great, um, um, definitely in sports, everybody's aware of that. You know, the Wimbledon player, everybody has, they don't even have one coach anymore. They have a couple of different coaches for mindset, for, for physical fitness, of course, for, uh, for the sports itself. And um, yes, and otherwise, honestly, I would also... Whenever we are setting up here businesses and I have the discussion, I always tell everybody business partners is similar to a marriage. You're stuck with them. So, and that means, of course, also you need to have a look at are your visions uh, aligned? Are you all going into in the right directions? Um, there is still a saying you are going... Uh, um, faster on your no what is it I think you're going faster on your own but you're building a little bit more um you're growing no you're going faster on your own but you're growing faster uh, with the team okay so and uh, yes that's what I sit together with them ask them what you want to do how you can achieve it listen to what they are saying yeah and take them serious I think that's also something. Um, so not just say, oh, that is not sales and funding. Thank you, Sabelo. Thank you for the good session. Can you share the recorded video? We will share that with the um, on. We can share that on social media. Yeah, we're not sending it out to individuals. Um, Cecilia, I'm so happy that I'm in the uh, the only director <laughs> driving my business. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, thank you so much. I definitely keep this in mind. Keep pushing for us to have that sit down. We really need. Okay. Um, Kirsty, if you want to go fast, go by yourself, and you want to go far, go in a team. Yeah, I knew there was something similar. Thanks very much for helping. Uh, thank you so much. Need to excuse myself. Okay, so also Christy. I if there is um Titus or Titus, you still have your hand up. Does it mean you have another question here? 
uh, Lali Pula, I'm the director, 60% shares and uh, two others 20 each. Can we hunt and take them out for our NPC? No, with an NPC that is a non-profit corporation, this is not a business, you need to have three directors. Yeah, that is by law. Uh, an NPC uh, doesn't want to make profits. It is a mix between uh, um, social entrepreneurship and, and a nonprofit organization. Yeah, but we will sit, send, uh, set up the meeting in any case, the two of us, and then we can discuss everything. Lovely. I hope that this really, really helped everybody, that it opened uh, your eyes. I, like I said, um, I love working together with uh, uh, Trevor. Um, I also, when I started with him, I always, I knew systems are important. I had the crazy idea I can implement the systems as soon as I'm growing. It never ever worked this way. So the other way is the right way. You first implement the system. Obviously you're setting the foundation and then uh, your business is growing. Yeah. Fiona, thank you. Debbie, thanks so much. Okay, so we will share the, the recorded version on our social media, both on uh, Trevor's uh, Facebook page and uh, social media and also on Funding Connections social media. So and we share uh, both of the links so that you can uh, book the, the consultations with us, whatever your requirements are. I had lots of fun here this morning. I like to be also reminded about all the things, what you can do and what you should do. It always motivates me. I hope it also motivated you. Um, yes, and then I wish you an absolutely successful rest of the week. And we will see some of uh, you, I will see on Monday again, every Monday morning at 10 o'clock on my Facebook page. I cover one specific topic where I talk about it and you all have enough time to ask me all the relevant questions. Take good care. Bye-bye.